Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of SIG in Death, we're going to be looking at uh, numeric operations. Uh, having looked at uh, the basic numeric types in the previous video, now we can see some operations that we can perform on those types. Okay, so um, I defined some constants here so we can uh, demonstrate uh, the different operations. We have here the basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remainder. Um, they basically use the same symbols that you would find in, in any other uh, programming language. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here, we uh, start uh, <clears throat> demonstrating um, the concept of overflow. Um, overflow is uh, the condition where you have a numeric type, and that type defines a range of the valid values that can be represented by that type. For example, if we're dealing with a U8, um, the valid uh, values would be from 0 to 255, okay? Any other uh, value that's outside that range would cause what's, what's known as an overflow. It could be uh, on the maximum, you could go over 255, or it could be on the minimum, you could go under 0, okay? Um, here, uh, we're adding 2 to uh, 250, so that would be no problem here, okay? Now, if, if um, instead of addition, let's say I'm doing multiplication, and I try to run this, I get the error. It's specifically saying that the overflow of type uh, U8, okay, with the value 500. So we can't put that value in a U8. Now, to deal with this, SIG provides uh, quite a bit of flexibility. You can control how you want this uh, situation to be handled. And one of the options would be to uh, do what's known as wrapping. So wrapping would be uh, using this operator. Uh, you would combine it with, uh, let's say, uh, multiplication. You could all combine it with uh, uh, addition or subtraction. All the operations that could cause this type of, of situation. Here, we're, the example, we're working with multiplication. This is wrapping multiplication, okay, with the percent sign. So uh, with wrapping multiplication, what's going to happen is uh, that value um, uh, 500, which goes over the maximum of the range for U8, it would uh, reach 255, and when it reaches 255, it would start over at zero. So it keeps on counting from zero uh, until it reaches uh, that difference, and um, it, it would not generate an error, okay? That's what uh, what's known as wrapping behavior. We also have another behavior which is called saturating, uh, and and in this case we use the pipe um, to combine it with the operator here, as you see here, multiplication with the pipe. Um, the way I see it is this pipe is like a wall, and you you, cr you crash against the wall, you can't go further. Well, that's precisely what happens with saturating. Um, when we reach one of the extremes of the range, let's say 255 in this case. Um, it'll stop right there. It won't go further. So the result of this uh, multiplication, since it goes over 255, will be 255, which is the maximum of the range. So that's basically the behavior that we're going to see here. So if we go now here, we see that uh, there's, a, there's some more output from, from other um, statements in the program. But we're basically uh, dealing here, we see the multiplication with wrapping, and this is this would be the result. This would be what happened, instead of 500, it wraps around to zero, and it keeps on going, and it reaches 244. Uh, here, it doesn't wrap around, it, uh, it crashes with the wall, <laughs> and the result would be uh, the maximum, which is 255, okay? What we have here is the same um, operations, but in the other direction, we're using subtraction here. We're subtracting from zero, which would go uh, overflow in the other direction, uh, trying to go below zero. So here we're wrapping around, and here um, we are saturating, okay? So that's basically this output that we're seeing right here with the minus, uh, with the percent. Oh, sorry, up here, the minus percent. Um, it would be uh, wrapping around to 255 because we're subtracting 1 from 0 and here we're subtracting 1 from 0 but we are saturating so we're going to stop at 0 okay 
One uh, subtle situation that can occur with, with uh, uh, numeric types in overflow is the negation uh, operation. Uh, when you have, for example, the, the signed integer 8-bit uh, uh, numeric type, the range for that would be from negative 128 to positive 127. So if we have negative 128 and we try to negate it, uh, you would expect to arrive at positive 128. But positive 128 goes beyond the maximum for the assigned 8-bit uh, integer. So uh, if we apply once again here, as you can see, we have the percent sign with the negation combined. So this would be wrapping negation. So what would happen here? Well, uh, if we negate 128, as I said, you would uh, arrive at positive 128 and the wrapping would make it wrap around to the minimum again of this range so you would end up back again at negative 128 so if we go here and we run the program you're going to see exactly that's what happens when you apply the negation with wrapping you obtain once again negative 128 okay there would be no no error but you have to be aware of that here we have the basic uh, shifting operations. You have the, the left shift. You also have a saturating left shift because uh, this could overflow. You have a right shift operation. Here we have the, the bitwise operations, which uh, manipulate the bits uh, in a numeric type. We have the bitwise OR with the single pipe, the bitwise AND with the ampersand, the bitwise exclusive OR, which uses the caret, uh, <coughs> the caret uh, symbol, or, or, or as some people may call it, the hat. And uh, here we're defining this uh, variable. We're using the binary uh, format um, to to specify that it's only the first bit that we're setting. And we are applying the um, bitwise not. Okay, which is basically uh, would flip the bits of an numeric type. Here we have the normal comparison um, operations that you would find in pretty much any programming language. You have the less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, and equals and not equals. Um, I added these comments at the end because uh, I'm using a font that that does ligature, so you can see. But basically, uh, this would be the combination of the, the exclamation point and the equals. Here are the double equals. Here are the greater than and the equals. So this is basically the, the characters that you would type, right? Now, uh, we're going to take a, a brief look at what's known as uh, type coercion. Um, we're going to uh, discuss this in, in, in further detail um, in another video. But I just wanted to uh, give you an idea what could happen. Uh, here, we're defining uh, this uh, constant pipe which is a U8 with the value uh, 200. This one has the type U16. This one has the type U32. And we're adding the U8 with the U16. And Zig will allow this because uh, this is safe. You know, um, we're basically arriving at a U32, which can represent all the values in a U16 and a U8. And we're adding this U8 and the U16. So Zig basically knows that this is going to be a safe operation here. And the fact that we're dealing with constants also, Zig can determine um, that it's safe at compile time. Okay, uh, Constants with compile time known values, like we're doing here. If it's an operation uh, that could be uh, the cause of losing data, for example, here, this is a U16. We're trying to assign it the value of D word, which is a U32. So in theory, we could have values that, that a U16 can't represent. So in that case, we, we have to use a cast. And int cast is one of the casting built-in functions. Whenever you see a, a function call and it starts with an at sign, that's a built-in function in Zig. Built-in functions are built into the compiler. Here, the int cast, uh, what it does, it, it allows you to cast from one type of integer to another. We're casting here from a U32 to a U16, okay? So um, we run the program, we see that we arrive, at, uh, we have here the D word and the word, okay? 
and uh, we have no problem because we're performing the appropriate uh, cast okay aside from casting there's also the concept of conversions okay and conversions is when you are uh, actually converting from one type to the other and this applies when you have types that are fundamentally different in their in their internal representation which is the case of floating point versus integers and here uh, we're defining an f32 floating point number and here we have an i32 uh, constant and uh, in order to assign it the value from that floating point number we use the int from float built-in function um, there's also float from int to go the other way around okay and uh, these uh, built-in functions precisely allow you to do these types of conversions this is the only way that you could you could do this uh, if you try to do this without the built-ins uh, you're gonna get an, an error okay so uh, basically that's uh, this output that we have here with an int and a float As you can see when we converted the floating point number to the integer we lost the decimal part okay the 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 part after the decimal point is basically uh, uh, chopped off, truncated. And when we go back from the integer to the uh, floating point, well, it converts it to a floating point number, but the, that uh, decimal part is, is set to zero because we lost it in the conversion from float to int, okay? And uh, aside from these operations, we also have a number of built-in functions um, I'm going to put the link uh, in the description um, where you can find more information about a whole bunch of these built-in functions and also uh, a whole bunch of functions in the stud math uh, namespace that give you perhaps a little more control uh, over operations uh, if you want to generate an error for example in certain operations okay so uh, this is pretty much it uh, for numeric operations there's a lot of things that you can do in zig um, it, it's a really powerful language at this uh, at the low level when dealing with numbers it gives you a lot of flexibility and um, we'll be looking at other uh, so-called primitive types in, in, in the next episodes so uh, do the builder here I'll see you in the next one